So I'm recording on my computer. And good morning, everyone. Sunday good morning. morning. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. 10, it's currently 10.07 a.m., so we're going to begin our service in a moment. We've got uh, several people have joined in today, but the service will be conducted with the participation of Glenn Freak, who's going to be the blue when you see the slides for the service. Glenn will be blue. Roxanne is going to be the voice of all people this morning, the yellow. And Bruce and Joan are doing the two scriptures and the prayers, and they're going to be in a nice rosy, like purpley color when it, when it comes up on screen. And when you see white, that's uh, as either stage directions or uh, or it's my voice. So we're ready to start our service now. We need to welcome everyone to this blessed Sunday morning. It's uh, it's the fourth Sunday in Lent, and we're excited to bring a Zoom service with more participants on our screen today. And you will see uh, in a moment. I'll turn on the slides for the uh, for the service, and we'll actually begin. We have music in this one that it's not video, well, it's video generated, but earlier this week, yeah. Glenn took my camera and uh, went to his first place in, in the bubble and Roxanne and, and Doris prepared some music for us. And another selection is there by Claude Steg, who I videotaped earlier in the winter or last fall. And uh, we got one selection on with Claude as a gradual. So it's uh, the, the music is, is exceptional. It's better than uh, this computer generated that we had last week. Mm. It's very, 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 very nice to, uh, to have with us today, to be so blessed to have so many willing to participate in our service. So I'm going to turn on my screen now to get the slideshow ready. Oops. I got to turn that off for a second. I got to go to the share screen first. And share sound, share. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> I got to get into the slideshow again because I just turned it off. So Lent four. Here's our service for the day. I got to move all of our faces out of the picture of the words. Turn on the slide for today. And here is the uh, the service direction for today. We go through. And uh, our, here's our service. We'll begin now with just an, a prelude by Doris. And our first uh, order of business is the hymn. So Roxanne will be singing. The words are on the side of your page there. And uh, you may sing along quietly if you're on mic. <coughs> Try the way. 
That was beautiful. Thank you, Roxanne. I noticed as well, and I'll be doing a little commentating like this as we go uh, through, Terrence Coates, or Terry, a buddy of mine from Deer Lake who's uh, been recently ordained to the diaconate is uh, joined us as well. So we've got a We've got someone online with us from Deer Lake this morning. Welcome, Terry. And I've got the slideshow fooled up now because I pressed a couple of buttons. So let me go back out. We might have to do this again. <coughs> Bear with us. There's all different little things we can do to fool this. There's more ways to fool it up than it is to fix it. But uh, the Lord blesses us and makes sure that we, uh, we are doing his, his goodness this morning. So any mistakes we make uh, are all overlooked. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You notice you can be following along in your BIS if you wish, but everything will be on your screen this morning. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. <clears throat> we have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Yeah. Almighty God, <clears throat> upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you on all goodness, and keep you in eternal Amen. life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us worship. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Oh, come, let us worship. <clears throat> and now we are quieting our hearts for the proclamation of God's holy word. And the first reading is Bruce. A reading from the 21st chapter of the book Numbers. They have traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Eden. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and there is detest, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snake away from us. So Moses prayed to for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. 
Anyone who was bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a brown snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the brown snake, they lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our psalm for today. Appointed psalm is number 107, selected verses. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the land, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sin. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. O God, the divine seeker, you are the light to the lost, bread to the hungry, deliverance to the captive, healing to the sick, eternal vision to the dying, and harbor to every soul in peril. Gather the wanderers from every corner of the world into the community of your mercy and grace that we may eternally praise you for our salvation in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and our second reading from scripture. This one is for Joan. Is this one on your screen, Joan? Joan's screen is frozen, I believe. Oh, yeah. Just wait a second, see if it unfreezes. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so I'll, I'll read this and uh, we'll get back to see if Joan and, and uh, Bruce get back on screen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of this great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms of Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do God's work, good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I just had a phone call come in from, from Bruce's number. <clears throat> I will call that while into the gradual music. <clears throat> I don't deserve a mansion as the gradual music for today. God's day. Jesus saved me, he gave his life on Calvary Street. Though I failed, he still loves me through his grace. I've been set free. Oh, I've come. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe him will not be condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lords, for the words you're putting on my lips this morning. May all of our words, our thoughts, and our actions be acceptable in your sight today and always. Amen. Amen. So our sermon for this morning is, I guess, entitled, What Does It Matter? What Does It Matter? Consider it today. What has changed over time? And how does circumstance that we're in from time to time affect our priorities? Because of the technology, uh, I don't have this op option in the pulpit to put up a couple of pictures, but here I do. So I want to share with you as a way of starting this morning that a century ago, back in the 1900s, early 1900s, around 1914, Ernest Shackleton, a famous explorer to the South Pole, he made three trips to the South Pole. And on the third trip, or the second trip, I'm not sure which, uh, they ran into some difficulty on their way back. And what happened is they had to lighten their load in order to get back to their ship in time to leave because they didn't have all kinds of helicopters and all kinds of GPS and all kinds of things that we have today. They had only their wits and their compass and the things that they could bring with them. So they had personal possessions and things that they had to scuttle. So he said to his crew, he said, uh, in order for us to get out of here safely, we're gonna to have to leave some things behind. And uh, everybody's gonna to have to travel light and we can make it back to the ship and get away from here. And what happened is they decided what they're going to take, and what they're going to leave. And he noticed, and in his writings, it was recorded that they gave up extra knapsacks, they gave up extra food, they gave up extra clothes that they had, extra mittens, extra things that they would have 
they actually took money and their wallets and things out of their knapsacks to lighten the load and to, to go. The things that they didn't give up on were photos and letters from families. Everyone to a man, and there were all men in that expedition, everyone to a man kept all of their personal belongings that were really close to them and gave up on material things. And today in the sermon, the comment is about the idea that what kind of love caused these explorers to leave behind their material things and just cling to things from people they had relationships with, their loved ones. Now, our text for today is all about relationships. Our text is 316, John 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And through that lens, if we think about success, and we think about the success of things like what Ernest Shackleton was doing, and, and some of the success in our lives today, and some of the people we see that are successful, often the most miserable people in the world are the ones at the top of the heap. So everybody in the world pats you on the back and tells you what a great person you are. And that is, and what we compare that to having someone very close to us whisper in our ear to say, I love you and mean it. So let me say it again. The only thing in life that really matters to us really are probably our relationships. And the fact that Shackleton's crew gave up on material things when they were put to the test and kept relationship items with them because that's what was strong. If they came to that point in their life that they knew their life might be failing or moving away from them if they got in that much trouble, then they wanted something of someone close to them with them. And there's three relationships that I want to focus on today. First, as the word there says, family, relationship of those closest to us. What a great, wonderful thing it is to be loved and and how long has it been since some of the closest ones around us have actually said to us that we love you? Do we need them to say it all the time? Probably not. But we do realize that that's what really matters most of all. And love is something that you share for a lifetime, for a long time. Just over two weeks ago, Eldon James, our youngest grandson, came home from the hospital. I was sitting with little Eldon, all eight pounds of him in my arms. And Brianna came to me and she wanted to rub his forehead and she wanted to pick at him a little bit. She's two years old. So she wanted, because when everybody is holding Bree, uh, Eldon, Bree wanted to be nearby. So I said to Claire, and Claire is six, I said, I believe Bree likes Eldon. I said, do you like Eldon? And six little six year old little mouth and little mind came back to me and she said, I don't like him, granddad. I love him. So even at that early age, little children are sensitive to what really counts in life. Our relationship with those closest to us. Now this little story about Bree and Claire and Eldon, I haven't shared with anyone else. It's only when I start thinking about what I wanted to say that I added it in. But it's amazing. Now that love comes true. Now there's another relationship that counts, and that is our human family, all of the people on earth, and the relationships we have with each other. We have close relationships with others in our church and with others in other groups that we are part of at our workplace, at, at our homes, in our families, but but there there's the whole human family, if we take it together, there is a relationship there that we are embounded to be a part of. We have a very important effect on it. Now, as a university student back when I was 22, 21, just graduating, uh, we studied F. Scott Fitzgerald, an American writer, in an American literature course that I did. Now, everybody knows F. Scott Fitzgerald probably for, the, for the, the novel, The Great Gatsby. Well, when he died, Fitzgerald died, he had a number of scripts or a number of manuscripts started, but not finished. The plots weren't all complete. 
And a professor told us about one thing that about what Fitzgerald had written and started. He said he had this amazing script started about members of a huge estranged family. This this wealthy gentleman had died, and uh, he left behind this huge mansion that was so so valuable. It was the the appraisal rate of it was so high, and there was another fortune to go with it. And he was leaving it to all of his family, but the family had to prove that they could live in this mansion together. And then they would inherit all of the wealth. Now remember the plot is unfinished, so we don't know how the story went. But what I wanted to draw to that today is, it's almost like if we reflect and say, humanity is much the same situation as that large family. We have this huge mansion that we're called Earth. And that we have to, to live here together, literally billions of people, and we have to come to some relationship. And it's like, we can inherit all of this if we can get along with each other. And we're a very diverse family. There's Chinese and Japanese and Africans and Indians and Russians and Europeans and North and South Americans and, and uh, Australians, people from every continent every language, every creed, everything. And our task is to learn how to get along together. Isn't it tragic that we've been through so many conflicts and so many things where hatred and violence have caused so many stresses that we have not proven that we are able, as a family of all human beings, to get along. And it's so needless, a lot of these things are. And it's only when we realize when we're faced with something like COVID that we sort of draw together a little more. And in that time, in the last year, probably some of our nations have drawn together. But even that has not been strong enough to bond us all together. So that's our second relationship. The third relationship is our personal relationship, our family relationship, and the human family relationship with God. And this third relationship is as important. Some would say, most of us would say, it's probably the most important relationship of all. Because it all, it always affects the other two. This is love, says John, in, in 1 John. I'm gonna put the next slide up because I'm gonna need this. This is real love that, that we are a part of. Not that we love God, as you see the second thing it says here, but that he lived up, he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. That's the real love, the real strong bond. This is love, the most and truest essence of it. And the author of 1 John also adds these other crowning words a little later when he says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Because no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And that's what our life is all about, this relationship. God's loving relationship with those closest to us, with the rest of God's children scattered over all of the world, and with God who created us and sustains us with his love today. Here is the most amazing thing about the Christian faith. The message that the creator God who brought into being everything that is or was or ever will be wants to have an intimate relationship with every person on earth. It makes no difference where you come from or what language you speak or what creed you confess. It makes no difference the color of your skin or the clothes you wear. It makes no difference. Only your heart makes a difference. God wants to be closer to you than any friend, any associate, any spouse you've ever known. Because of the other phrase in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you notice in the little graphic that I found there for that phrase, it's done in the shape of a heart. The most pure love of all. That's what God has for us. He wants an intimate and personal relationship with you, with me, and with everyone. All you have to do is invite him into your heart. 
in John 3.16 is worth repeating once more. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. God loves us, one and all. Now we affirm our faith as Glenn and Roxanne would tell us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I think Joan and Bruce are back. Our prayers. You have your microphone turned on. If I click a button to turn on their microphone, the slides will move. So I guess we'll have to proceed. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the one Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of our church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all whom have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We call it for the fourth Sunday. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In prayer over our gifts this morning, the gift we bring of our presence and our prayers in this service. We pray for all those around us who are gifts in our relationships. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. In our Lord's Prayer. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, king, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now our final music for today. Again, we go back to Roxanne and Doris.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you peace. Amen. Through this coming week, until we meet again, may the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness. Win us that pleases him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us live, lead, and live in peace. Thanks be to God. And Doris will play us out, same as she did at the beginning. It's a beautiful look, Doris. <laughs> and we're so pleased that everybody that joined in this morning and those that will watch our recording on Facebook. We're so pleased to be part of your life this morning and hopefully it's been an inspiration and a blessing. May you have a great day. And now I got to somehow get out of this to get into the shared screen. Oh, there you are. Stop sharing. So I have to stop sharing. And now I'll also.